Hey everybody, welcome back to Mike's Wooden Things and Stuff. Welcome to another rolling pin. Uh, I've already made French style rolling pins on the channel. I'll leave a link to that up there if you want to see the original French style rolling pin that I made. Um, but this one's a little bit different. This is just a little guy. It's made out of walnut and with a nice little thin strip of maple down the middle per customer order. And I don't know how I'm going to make that thin little strip of maple, because I don't have a drum sander. So uh, come along, we'll find out if I can figure out how to do that. Um, yeah. But before I do that, I'm super hungry. I'm going to eat this delicious meatball sub from Subway. Uh, Subway does not sponsor this show, or this channel, because they don't care whether I keep doing these videos or not, probably. Uh, but... If you do care that I keep making these videos, I'll have links down in the description to my Etsy store and my Patreon page where you can go help me out. And uh, I'll be back in a couple minutes to make, uh, make a rolling pin. Stay tuned. <laughs> this is good. <laughs> I'm actually really hungry. This wasn't just a commercial. I'm, I am going to eat this sandwich before I make rolling pin. So, start by finding some wood, obviously. I got this uh, broken down old uh, maple table that I've been chipping away at for things. And I had an eight quarter piece that looked about the right length. And then I found a piece of walnut that had a nice clear section, straight grain chunk in the middle of it that I could cut about 14 inches worth out of to get started. Uh, it was a very, very specific commission piece, this one. Uh, very thin strip of maple between walnut and it was supposed to match a larger one that the uh, he's a pastry chef in New York and you know, it's already got a big one and he wanted a little one to go with it that matched uh, for his social media posts and, and for small things, I guess. I'm not a pastry chef, but he was very specific about what he wanted when he contacted me to order it, so here I go trying. Uh, the idea, my first idea was that I might just be able to rip a nice little strip off the outside of this um, piece of maple wanted it to be less than an eighth of an inch and so I started by ripping strips off the outside but I was never really happy with how clean the cut was a uh, little bit of saw mark and it, it was a little concerned about how it was gonna glue up but after I'd done two or three it only took me two or three tries to get a size a, a width that I liked and a clean enough cut that was going to glue up nicely so I actually didn't have to fuddle around with it too much. Uh, I thought I was going to have to like, you know, super glue it to my bench and then hand plane it and stuff but it ended up, I ended up getting lucky and I got a nice thin strip that was the right width and was clean enough to get glued up so it wasn't as complicated an ordeal as I expected. And once I got that all glued up and then I could face up one side with the plane to ride against the fence to clean up the other side. And this blank didn't need to be exactly square because all I needed to know was where the middle was. And I could use the maple strip itself to tell me that uh, because that was supposed to be in the middle of the final piece. So I squared up both ends, marked out the middle of that strip and gave myself a little dick dick mark with, uh, with an awl to get up between centers on the lathe and then I could get to turn it. Wait, no, I decided to knock off the edges. Normally I do this with the table saw by tilting the blade to 45 degrees and ripping a little strip off, but this is actually quicker to do it by hand with a hand plane um, rather than, you know, get the different throat plate out and tilt the saw to 45 and then make the cut and then get the saw back to 90 degrees. This whole knocking the corners off thing with a hand plane took me a grand total of about a minute and a half. Um, and you just, I just needed a quarter inch, three eighths of an inch off each edge and then I could, uh, you know, 
cuts down the time of roughing it out over on the lathe. Because uh, roughing square things out on the lathe isn't, isn't the fun part of turning. So you want, you want to get through that as quickly as possible. And then I start in the middle of the blank and uh, work on getting it round. And that's all I'm doing at this point. I'm not worried about the quality of the cut or anything of the sort. I'm literally just making it round. Starting in the middle, going the width of the tool rest, and then I can move out to each end and make myself a nice tool. And once I got a nice consistent tube of wood, it's not a tube of wood, a cylinder of wood, <laughs> I can uh, crank down the speed on the lathe and do an initial sanding on it. Uh, basically just did like 80 grit, 120 grit, uh, just to even out any little, you know, ridges in between where I stopped and started with the, uh, with the rest. And then I could mark out where I wanted to start the taper. And uh, the taper I started with, I want to say it was about two and a half inches from each end. Um, and the order was to taper down from one and three quarters ish to one and a quarter ish. Um, but kind of like anywhere in that approximate range was fine. And so. That's what I started with, and I just eyeballed the second side based on the first side. I didn't use any calipers or, or gauges or anything to set it. And uh, just slowly worked away at it until both sides matched. And then I could sand it back up and blend those, that taper into the main section. And then I was looking at it and I thought, well, I should probably send dude a picture to say, you know, to confirm that yes, I'm making this thing. And what do you think of this? And he liked it, but he liked the amount of taper, which was what I was concerned about. But he wanted it started a little bit further towards the middle. So I remarked it out at about three and a half inches and uh, just kind of blended the taper down a little bit and uh, sent it back to him. And he said, yeah, that's perfect. Thank you very much. And I sanded it back up, went through all the grits right up to 240, 320, something like that. Uh, it was pretty smooth, but then I used my new favorite finishing product, which is perfect for a rolling pin because it's a food safe um, abrasive wax that I have got from a friend in Australia that sent it to me. And uh, basically it's, it's your finish and your final sanding in one two step process. You buff it in, you, you, you rub it on, and then you buff it in right on the lathe and it finish sands your product and finishes your project. And it's called Custom Grit. And it's a, a two-step process that I liked so much. It was sent to me for free. And I liked it so much that I asked my new friend in Australia if I could sell this for him in North America. So it is now in my Etsy store. The link will be down below. It is not an inexpensive product. But it goes a long way and it lasts a long time and I'm loving it and everybody else that I have talked to that has used it and has purchased it from me also loves it. Um, so yeah, check it out if you need a new, uh, a new finish, lathe project, project finish. 
it is absolutely fantastic. And so you buff the buff the first coat in, buff it off, buff the second coat in, or the second step in, and you buff that in and buff that off, and away you go, you're off to the races. Then I could just part off both ends down to a little nub, take it over to the bench, chop that little nub off, quick hit over at the belt sander just to get rid of any leftover nub. And then quickly break the edges and sand up those ends to the same 240 or 320 that I sanded the rest of it to. Break those edges real quick and uh, add some finish to the end and we're all done. And uh, I sent it off to him and he sent me a, a reply saying thank you so much, I love it. And uh, I'm happy, he's happy, everything's great. Well, there we go. One black walnut with a little maple stripe, French style rolling pin. Turned out really good, actually. I'm really happy with it. Hopefully he will be as well. It's on its way to New York City, New York, uh, to go with his other full-size one. And I'm on my way to my next project. So stay happy, stay healthy, stay safe. See you next time. Bye for now. Thank <laughs> you.